Just imagine it, Carol. There are other worlds out there, just like ours. <gasps> we should go on a space adventure someday. Don't you think that'd be so cool? Are you kidding? It'd be the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I remember saying almost exactly the same thing. Did you have a change of heart? Not really, no. I guess I just wasn't prepared for the sacrifices I had to make. Just gotta keep moving forward with the mission, I guess. No point in thinking about a past that can't be changed. You're right. Um, <clears throat> how's the other girl doing? Mila? I'm not sure. Can you go check on her, Carol? Okie dokie. I'm gonna get some sleep. Well, I'm fine. You go on ahead. I like how Lilac and Torg are kind of the grown-ups of the group. How's it going? I'm... I'm making a wish. Oh, what kind of wish? Well... I really want to see my mommy and uh. daddy again. Sounds like a good thing to wish for. We're gonna be going inside soon. You wanna come? Okay. She thinks she's gonna fly away and see her mommy and daddy again. Hey guys, and welcome to part 4, this is Sky Battalion. Pretty crazy stage, we have to take down these three enemy ships and I'm gonna take down each one as a different character. We're approaching the middle ship as Carol because overall it just seems to be made with her in mind save one little bit I'm gonna point out in a sec. But you know, it has a motorcycle, it has a lot of jump pads and whatnot, it seems to be a Carol centric part of the stage. Uh, there's just one car directly above us that we can't reach as Carol. We can reach it as Lilac or Mila, but Carol just cannot go up that high, unfortunately. Fortunately, Strife is making a new build of the game where cards like that will be easier to reach as Carol. So, you know, you're not gonna have to worry about playing as a specific character for cards like that. But at the moment, at the time of this recording, that's neither here nor there. And holy crap, this, ga this, this game's soundtrack is just so good. But this one stage's theme, it's one of my favorites in the whole game. I just love this tune, because just the way it's composed and the beats and whatnot, it sounds like it's ripped straight out of Mega Man X4. I mean, just listen to this and see how fitting it is. By the way, there's another bonus room token. You can get it as any character, but I find it easiest to get as Carol, simply because she can cling to the walls on either side and get out of there with no trouble. You don't have to worry so much about falling down. <sighs> so yeah, this- oh, this is a part of the stage where I was just being kinda dumb trying to get to that route there. I didn't realize there's a perfectly easy way to get up there or over to the left. And there we go. And now I'm trying to get another car that I just realized is over to the left. You can get this one as the other characters, but I think it's easiest to get as Carol. And then there's a motorcycle right over here. Uh, I just love the motorcycle. It makes Carol so much more fun to play as she is on her own, honestly. Woo! Oh, and here's one of the most obnoxious enemies in the game, which killed the motorcycle just like that. I call them the moaning guns. Yeah, because that's all they do is just. <laughs> anyway, we're caught up right to a sub boss. There are three sub bosses. Actually, there's like four, and then the um, and then you know a, a fifth boss. Uh, this one, honestly, it's it's much easier to take down as either other character because Miller can just keep throwing blocks overhead to get it, and Lilac can of course like charge through it and whatnot. Uh, with Carol, you can jump on these jump pads and try to reach it through the air, or you can just keep swiping at it from underneath. But overall, it, it takes her much longer to claw away at this thing than the other characters. Uh, by the way, you may recognize this from one of the earlier cutscenes. Again, I, I probably should have approached this stage as another character, but at the time I felt like Carol would be the most fitting. Anyway, that didn't take too, too long. And there's an extra life. You get some health and extra life at the end of each of these ships. And I don't know what I was doing there. 
Again, I, I guess it's just that at the time of this recording, I was pretty tense. I didn't know what exactly to do. Oh, there's a card. That's what I was getting for. <laughs> okay. And now we're going to play as the Lilac. The, the, uh, the fire ship, the second ship. This one seems the most fitting for her because there's a lot of fans and whatnot that she can use to send herself flying. I mean, come on, guys, look at this, listen to this. Isn't this just amazing? It just has this great feeling of adventure to it. Anyway, like I said, this, this stage introduces a lot of crazy new enemies. That's one thing I love about the game in general, is that it never seems to run out of new ideas for enemies for you to fight. There's a, uh, let's see, I think there were four cards on the, the, the first ship, but then there's three here, then there's three on the last one. I actually, I may have gotten that order wrong, but I do think I got all of them in this this one recording. Well, okay, in this one video, because of course I had to record it separately with each character. It's a pretty action-packed stage. It's not my favorite, it's not the best, but it just, like I said, it has this great feeling of adventure to it. It is pretty exciting. And the ships, while they are each like a level in and of themselves, they're short enough that y you don't end up, you know, stuck here forever. And we're coming up to a mid-boss. This is one of the, probably the toughest of the sub-bosses, I think. Like, even with Lilac. Actually, you know, now that I think about it, you can only approach this mid-boss as Lilac in this stage. I know it's a little early to be talking about them since there's still a bit of the level to go, but this is another one of those parts that's exclusive to Lilac. I'll also show you what Carol and Mila have to fight, but uh, this is a very character-important boss, you'll see. And there's another card. I said I'd get all of them, and I am. You just don't know when to fold, do you? Don't you get it? Lord Brevin's the murderer! Thanks for the tip. Now get off our ship before I throw you overboard. Like that'll happen. <sighs> oh well, don't say I didn't warn you. Spade's a pretty cool dude. Anyway, yeah, Spade is actually one of the hardest bosses in the game, in my opinion. Simply because I just cannot keep up with a guy. Like, there are a lot of ways you can hit him, but you have to be super careful and super fast. Like, when he's dashing around and leaves that green streak, you... <laughs> you can um, you can catch him while he's leap leaping through the air, but it's a very narrow window of opportunity. And like as soon as you dodge him throwing the cards, you, you know, then he's throwing more than at the ground. And you know, at first I thought I was doing pretty well on this run. I thought I would be able to beat him, but uh, uh, yeah. Like I said, he's one of the hardest bosses in the game. Uh, I'd say he's hardest to fight as Carol, not so hard to fight as Elia, like. Pretty easy to fight with Mila, but I'll get to that later, because we actually do fight this guy more than once if you play through the whole game. Anyway, on this run, I did much better than before. I don't really know what happened. I just, I guess I just went kind of crazy. And I just kicked him out of the game. Anyway, I'll talk about, uh, about Spade when we face him again. I'm sorry I didn't talk about him that much there. I, I guess I was just having a hard time focusing. But anyway, that's two of the ships down. I still got a bit of the video to go, but now I'm gonna approach the third ship, the Earth ship, as Mila. Oh wait, actually no, I'm showing off her mid boss. Yeah, you may recognize this helicopter. We saw it once in the Shuigong Palace, and we saw some of them chasing down Torx's ship at the beginning. And yeah, I think it's neat how they show these things, and you actually get to fight them later on, because you see like how tough they are in the cutscenes. It's like, oh man. So anyway, this is um. Pretty tr a pretty tricky boss. It really doesn't take that many hits, but it's really good at zipping out of the way of Mila's attacks. Not so much Carol, because hers are much shorter range, so as long as you're close to the helicopter, you should be able to hit it pretty easily. But yeah, all I'm saying is with Mila, you have to be really careful, especially with her significantly shorter health bar. So we're doing pretty well, got an extra life, got some extra health, just take, uh, take down these Kens, and we'll be done with this ship, and we can go on to the last part of the level. And I died! I should have waited a little longer for Torque to show up, apparently. And of course you get warped to before you fight the boss. That is a dick move game. But anyway, there we go. One more ship to go. 
I, again, I'm sorry I'm kind of fumbling around, but I'm just so mesmerized by this level. I love the visuals, I love the music, it's just very epic. It's so epic that even when just watching myself play it, I can't help getting distracted and letting myself get sucked into it. So, you know, I, I, personally, it's not my favorite stage, but I do think it's one of like the, the really, really good ones. I do admit it, it does have that kind of effect on me. I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to explain it. Like, honestly, it's it's not the most fun to play, but it is the most fun to watch. That's how I'd put it, yeah. This part is very, very tricky. I mean, I, I made it look pretty easy in a later take, but, well, you just watch. Yeah, you slide down the edges of that crystal. You just cannot stand on it. So if you slide to the left, you get pinched between the thing as it's moving and the wall right next to it. And yeah, I must have tried to get that like 10 times, but I left most of that footage out because I didn't want to keep you guys here all day. Anyway, these are pretty easy to dodge. You can actually stand on the top of them and ride them back up. And not all of them will crush you, but a few of them will. This is another one of those bits that's, that I don't think you can reach as Carol. It's pretty easy to reach us Lilac and Miller because there are these these fans that'll shoot you up and you can use their tricks to ride it higher, but Carol just doesn't have any abilities like that. You know, she's just a fighter and that's really it. There's another uh, card coming right up. This is one of the easiest in the level to get. You just have to be careful not to, you know, end up with one of those in the way. I approach it from the right, but you can also approach it from the left. And we're coming up to another sub-boss. There are so many sub-bosses in this stage. Most of them are pretty fun. But I do think it's interesting how each of these ships has its own uh, guardian, I guess you could say. This boss is a little easier to fight as Mila because once she gets on that fan, it's like she, she just kind of twirls around and it keeps her going up until you, know, you get shot down by something. And you can kind of suspend yourself by shooting that attack downward. Um, Lilac and Carol especially can't keep themselves up that well. You kind of have to wait for that thing to drop that, that yellow whatever it is into the ground and then ride it up. With me a lot, I find myself only having to do it a couple of times because when you use that um, kind of move really close to that thing, it, it does so much damage like you wouldn't believe. The thing about Mila's attacks is her, her attacks do much more damage if you're right up close to an enemy. If you're even a couple of feet away from them, they only do a little bit of damage. It's like each pixel attacks by itself, you know? And now we have to fight the real boss. This is one of my favorite bosses. I do find myself dying to it sometimes. You will face justice! Surrender! I can't! I won't! So you have chosen death! It's very Storm Eagle-esque with some of his attacks. Like, as you saw, it was dashing around like four times. But it's also got an attack where it like, creates this tornado and tries to blow you off of the ship. And depending on what side of the, 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 the whatever it is, the, the, the flying peacock that you're standing on, and how close you are to the edge, you might very well get blown off. You have to be very careful. Like, if you see him going really high in the air, it's like, oh boy, there he goes. This thing is very fast, it's got a lot of crazy attacks. This is one of its coolest. This is a kind of boss that doesn't really do that much damage, but it covers a lot of ground with its attacks. I played as Mila just, well, because, I, I guess. Um, I, I like her quotes, as you'll see in a moment. But she has a really special ability. Her shield can't block all attacks, but it, it can block those huge blue energy balls that it fires at you every now and then. If you angle it just right, you can kick it away and... It, it, yeah, I didn't really have anywhere to go when it did that attack. Oh well, I guess I'm going to show you how the boss fight goes in this run where I do beat it, but if you look at the timer you can see I had to fight this thing a fair number of times before I beat it. So yeah, you may have noticed, um, the timer doesn't reset when you when you die. It doesn't, like, go back to the latest checkpoint and, and just continue as it were. The timer is always going, and every time you die, well, you get another minute or so added to the timer from the last time you attempted to beat it. Anyway, like the Mantis and the, the level 3 boss, the Fortune Knight boss, 
this thing has like five rounds. You just have to clip all of the feathers on the tail and then hit the head and you just do that five times. Every couple of times he gets some crazier moves, he, you know, he gets more aggressive. And oh man, the music is very cool. I really like Prince Dale's theme. And yeah, this is his theme because it only ever plays when you're fighting him. There is going to be one other fight with him later on in the game and oh boy! <laughs> but yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty fitting, I think. And apparently I was so far away from him that the at that attack just then didn't do quite as much damage as it normally would have. But anyway... That uh, flower thing over to the left, you really need that if you're playing as Mila. Simply because, well, she only gets like half as much health as the other characters. So as challenging as this boss already can be, it is so much harder when you're playing as her. Because some of this guy's attacks can actually clip off like two of those petals. Which might not be so bad for the other characters, but for Mila, that's like half of her health. But again, I just wanted to show her beating him because, well, you'll see in a sec. Okay, the last time you fight him, the petals will turn red, and I think they actually take less damage than before. For some reason, I just have an easier time clipping them. I don't know. And then... Get ready for it. This is far from over! So that's why your airships are boat-shaped. <laughs> I like that little jab at that trope. How could Zhao do this? He must have thought we were all he needed. We would have been ready if he had told us. No wonder Brevin's gotten away with everything. Our leaders are too brain-dead to pay attention to anything but themselves! <sighs> Never mind. I'm just... I don't know. It's alright. How far is the closest city? Shang Tu is just a few miles east. The river should take us there. We'll give that panda guy an update on our situation. The Magister might be able to help. I hope he believes us. Things have been pretty crazy so far, huh? Yeah. How long have you been away from your parents? I'm not sure. It feels like a really long time. And you've been alone in the woods ever since? Yeah. I hope this doesn't sound weird, but... <laughs> that's kind of impressive. I wouldn't survive a day without my treehouse. Hey, when this is all over, how about we have a girls' night out? Just you and me! You mean... a play date? Something like that. We could try out some dresses... Or maybe buy a huge plate of sushi and just pig out. What about Carol? Can she come too? Good luck getting her to put a dress on. <laughs> well, sure. I'd like that. Great. So, uh, how did you two meet anyway? A green cat and a purple dragon girl seem like a weird mix. Yeah, we were part of a street gang called the Red Scarves. We used to make crazy money from martial arts tournaments. Is that where you met Spade? Yeah. He was cool at first, but things got weird. Why? Well, there's there's lines we don't cross, and he crossed them. Unfortunately, we don't really learn anything more about Spade after that. We don't really get any closure for his story. I just think that he and Lilac and Carol had a falling out at some point because he was dabbling in things like assassination or whatever, and they just didn't really want a part of it. That's my theory, anyway. See you in part five, guys.